and you're watching Innovative Amazing Science with Sunana. I believe that you're doing great, so am I. So let's hear another fascinating story of my childhood. In our drawing room, there was a huge mirror. One interesting thing about that mirror was the down portion, roughly 5 cm from the base, was not smooth. In some museums, we get to see such type of mirrors, which makes us look very plumpy or slim or stout. The mirror which we had was not ghostly, but somehow uneven at the lower portions. As we were very small, we used to sit down mostly and keep playing. Suddenly, I observed my eyes looking like different when I was changing my position up and down and the thickness of my facial structures were increasing and decreasing. For us, it was just magic. So most of the time, me and my brother used to play in front of the mirror. In our drawing room, we had TV also, which was just at a certain angle and was just beside the mirror. One day I was standing and combing my hair and the TV was on. I was just in front of the mirror which had smooth surface, but I could not see the TV. My brother was standing at the opposite end of the TV, but he could see the TV images clearly which was reflecting on the mirror. We both didn't understand the concept. To understand it more, we thought of doing some more experiment. We tried with the torchlight and it was real fun. So usually during the prayer time when everyone used to close their eyes for prayer, me and my brother used to focus the light on the mirror and observe. Even there was the slightest change in the angle of incidence, the light at the other end was not visible. So to know more about this magic and how it works exactly, Stay tuned with me and let's get started. So the things required are, I've taken a white sheet of paper, a laser light, a pencil, protector, a scale and a plain mirror. So my first step is, I'll draw the borders so that it looks a little neat. And then what I'm going to do is, I'll just draw a straight line. And I will name it as X and Y. And it is a plain mirror. Once I complete it, I'll show you the closure view. So we will take any point here, any midpoint and we are going to take our protector and draw 90 degree that is perpendicular. We'll put our point here at 90 and then we will just join both the points. So this is the normal. So I have drawn this normal, we can write here as N and normal. Okay, so our next step would be, usually what happens, like usually we try to focus the lights, like we try to focus our light, that is the angle of incidence or the incident ray, and we try to find out the angle of reflection, which is equal, but in this case, what I'm going to do is, first we will take any angle, any random angle of your choice. Okay, because we know the law states like angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection. So, here I will take any angle of my choice 
and let us prove that whether that angle is correct or whether the law is correct or not. So let's take uh, 30. Okay. So what I'll do is uh, I'll take this protector. I'll put the midpoint here. Okay. So from the base, I'll just count 30. 1, 2, 3. Here I go. Then from this side also, I will do the same. I'll count 30. 1, 2, 3. Here I go. So I'll just mark this. I just join both the points. Okay. I'm almost done. Okay. So we will put this arrow. This is the incident ray. We can write here as incident. Ray. And give it a name as A. And this one is the reflected ray. Arrow upwards and give it a name as B. This is our angle of incidence as I. And this is our angle of reflection as R. We can write here angle of incidence and angle of reflection. So now our job is to we have already taken some angle. So here earlier we had taken 30 so the remaining portion that is the angle of incidence is 60 and here also reflection angle of reflection is 60 so now we are going to prove whether we were correct or not now you can observe carefully that i have positioned my mirror at a proper place and uh, i have used a box for that at the back so that it stands firm and if you observe the image carefully, you can see the incident ray that is marked as A, the normal that is marked as N, and you can see the reflected ray also which is marked as B. And if you observe, you can see the angle of incidence that is I is equal to the angle of reflection that is R. So usually what we follow is, we try to focus our light and try to observe the reflected ray and then we measure the angles and then we prove that whether angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection or not. But in our experiment today we are going to do something different. First, we have taken the angle and we know that the law of reflection states that angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection. So we have taken both the angles as 60 degree so our job is to prove now whether it is equal or not we are doing in a reverse way so let us just observe and try to find out and uh, let's do the activity so now i'm going to focus the laser light so when the laser light is focused that is the incident ray which is a ray of light that strikes a surface, the angle between this ray and the perpendicular or normal to the surface is the angle of incidence. You can see the angle of incidence. Again, I'm going to show you. So again, if you see that the ray of light is focused and you can see the angle of incidence, and likewise, you can see the reflected ray also corresponds to the given incident ray. So, reflected ray is the ray that represents the light reflected by the surface. So, you can see that the angle of incidence and the angle of reflections is equally same. You can see how it is meeting at the normal and it is equal. 
let's switch off our lights and observe so now the room lights are off and you can get a clear picture and how lovely it is looking so when you see that the ray of light striking the surface which is actually the incident ray the reflected ray also corresponds to the given incident ray and here you can clearly observe the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection and it is moving in the same path can you see there is no difference in the angle and it looks just wow so the activity which we just did now is successful because we had taken angle of incidence as 60 and we had also taken angle of reflection as 60. So we proved that it is equal. So the law of reflection states that angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection which was proved from our experiment. If you enjoyed this activity, do like it. And do not forget to subscribe by pressing the bell icon which is right there on your screen. And if you wish to share your experience with everyone, do put it in the comment section or do write a mail so that in my future upcoming videos, I can share your experience through an experiment with everyone. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.